This is a demonstration of the full personnel action request, which going forward, I will refer to as PAR process using the release to institutional training environment, which contains no PII. During this demonstration, I will show how to create a self-service initiated PAR, followed by S1 pool review and actions, and finally PAR approval. To begin, I am logged in as an IPSA member that happens to be a company commander. I will create a name change PAR in this demonstration and route it to my Battalion S1 shop, also known as my servicing S1 pool within IPSA. So from my self-service homepage, I will select the My Personnel Action Request tile. As you see, I am redirected to the My PAR dashboard page. From here, I can create my desired PAR. My name and IPSA generated employee ID is visible, signifying that this PAR request is for me. HR professionals can submit PARs on behalf of another soldier. In those scenarios, the HR professional will search for and select a soldier so that their name appears in this section. So first I will select the category, and in this scenario, the category is profile. Next, I will select the magnifying glass to identify my PAR type. Now the available options up here are based on the category selection that I previously made. I will now select the name change PAR. Then now select click create new PAR. Now from here, I am at the PAR page in which now I can complete the required fields. Now if I need assistance in order to complete this PAR, I can click this actions icon and then click instructions. And the IPSA included instructions on how to properly produce this PAR will be now available to me. It also provides information about supporting documentation that I should add while making a change or submitting this type of request. So I will go ahead and fill in the fields. My new last name. And for the effective date, I'm going to pick another a previously or a past date. Now, at this point, if I have attachments in which if, if I was submitting this request for a real world scenario, I would absolutely have an attachment. I must first press the save button. And then click add attachment. And from here, I can browse my device for my marriage certificate or whatever key supporting documentation I'm supposed to add. Now, once I'm happy with what I've included in my PAR, I've attached my um, the attachments that I needed to be in here. I'm going to submit, click the submit button. And now IPSA tells me or gives me this confirmation message, letting me know that my request has been submitted to my S1 pool. This number that's located beside uh, this S1 pool is the department number that that pool is, is linked to. So I'm gonna click OK. And now as you see, my approval status is now pending. So I'm gonna click that. And this just gives me another view of where my PAR is located. So right now it shows that it's with my S1. And here it lists, gives me the members of the S1 pool that could potentially take action on my request. And now that I'm done here, I'm going to click complete or done.
go ahead and go back to my home. And my request is submitted. Now, if I would like to log in just to see where my request is, let's say the next day or the week after, if it's been a couple days, I can go back to my PAR dashboard and see the recently submitted PARs here. I can select it. And then from there, again, go back to the pending status and see where it's located. To continue this demonstration, I am now logged in as an HR professional assigned to an S1 pool. I will now locate the recently submitted name change PAR, review it, and build the remaining workflow to the approval authority. So first I'm going to select my HR professional homepage. And from there, I see that I have a notification. By clicking this notification, I am alerted that I have a PAR available to me that I can review and push over um, for approval. I can select the part from here, or I can select this approvals tab that is located under my HR professional homepage in order to access the PAR. So I have two PARs that are currently waiting for some type of action from my S1 pool. The one that I am looking for is this one, so I'm going to select it. And as I see the approval status says pending, I can then review the PAR, ensure all the contents make sense, look for the attachments if there's any attachments. And before I press my recommend approval or denial, I'm going to select the pending status. And I'm going to add the rest of the workflow. Now, if I click this down arrow to expand the insert template, uh, section, I can add a predefined workflow template that my team uses. So as an HR professional, if you have requests that are very common to your organization, you can pre-build a workflow template in which every time that type of request comes into your S1 pool, you can simply search for the request or well, search for the template and then add in the rest of the workflow automatically based off of that predefined uh, list. But in this case, I'm going to do what we consider an ad hoc um, workflow in which I'm going to manually add each member of the workflow. I'm going to click this plus sign. And from here, I have different options. So you see approver, intermediate approver, reviewer, another HR specialist, or a user list. So I can make a selection to identify who I would like to add to this next workflow. Uh, next in this workflow chain. So in this particular scenario, I'm going to keep it simple and just go ahead and select an approver. Once I have the info ID, I want to click the magnifying glass so that I can thoroughly identify the person. Select insert. And now my workflow is complete. Now, if I would have inserted a reviewer or an intermediate approver, then I would need to continue to put, click the plus sign to add more members until I got to the final approval authority or the final approval authority from my level. So now I'm going to click done. And I'm going to select recommend approval. Provide a comment. and hit submit. So now this PAR is now in a status of still pending, but as you can see here, it has been pushed from the S1 pool and is now with the next person in the workflow chain, which is the review, which is the approver. And you could see myself, the HR professional who I'm logged in as, the comments that I left for this PAR. I'm going to click done. And I'm going to go back to my home page. I am now logged in as an authorized approver, which happens to be a battalion commander. I will locate the submitted name change PAR that is pending my approval, 
review it and annotate my approval decision. Now, just like as an HR professional, I do receive a alert and notification here that I have an action waiting for my, I have a PAR waiting for my action. Or I can select off of my member, my manager homepage, I can select the approvals tab. So for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and use the alert. Now from the alert, it takes me directly to the PAR and I again can review the contents of the PAR. I can review attachments if there were any. I can look at the approval status and review any previously provided comments from any other member of the workflow chain. And once I'm satisfied with the request and is ready to make my decision, I'm going to either approve, deny, or push this back for um, corrections or changes. In this scenario, I'm going to select approve and provide comments. Once the status has changed to approved, I can open it and just review that everything has been completed. And I'll go back to my home page. So I have now logged back in as the original member that submitted the PAR request. And as you see, I'm on my self-service screen. And so I want to click my notifications and check my alerts and it lets me know that the PAR that I submitted has been approved. So I can select that PAR or that notification. And see the status is now showing as approved. And then to also couple that, you can see that the name change has taken effect immediately. So that completes this PAR demonstration.